Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Spirit Chats with Cat. Um, today we are going to pick up where my story left off on the previous podcast. Um, previously, we ended up uh, where um, I had passed away and come back. And so this podcast picks my story up from that point. Um, after that situation, um, I was sent to my grandmother's house to stay with her for a while. And just to give you some background on the family history there, uh, we the house had been in our family for quite some time. My family on that side had immigrated to the United States from Scotland in 1897. At that point in time, um, Scotland was not a great place to be if you were of Scottish blood. So there were a lot of Scottish immigrants leaving there at that point in time and coming to this country. And what they would do is a group of them would get together and send one person here to the United States with money that they had all saved individually. These families had saved money and they would give it to this person and this person would come here and they would buy a large amount of land. And then once that was done, the families that had invested in this would leave Scotland and come here. So that's how my family, my Scottish part of the family came to be here in the United States and came to own this property um, with, you know, a river running through it and a significant amount of acreage and build this very large home on it and around the home sprang up a small town. So this home started, this home was built by my great-grandfather. And when my great-grandfather and his wife passed away, it came to my grandfather. So that's how I came to be in this very old home um, with my grandmother and grandfather after I had passed away and then been revived. Um, so, of course, there were several people that had passed away in the home because you're talking about a difference of 1897 to when I was there in the mid-1970s. So that's a significant amount of time that we had inhabited, my family had inhabited the home. And my grand, my great-grandparents had passed away there. And um, some aunts and uncles had also, great, I should say, great aunts and uncles had also passed away there. So there was a you know, several deaths in the family that occurred in the home um, before I went there. So the first story I want to tell you about is an incident that occurred not long after I had come to live there. And I always felt uneasy at night there. And this particular night, I had laid down in bed and it was part of what made me so uneasy was it was so dark. Once the lights were turned out, it was so incredibly dark and very, very quiet in the home because it was out, you know, this, this was not a home in town by any means. This was out in the county. And at that point in time, there were not 
many people that lived out there and your closest neighbor was miles away. So there was not a whole lot of noise at night. And it was a big house and there were, I think, only five of us in it at the time. One of those being my younger brother who was just out of being a toddler. He was on the edge of of being a toddler and a big boy, quote unquote. So um, that's who was in the home at that point in time. And during the time that this particular incident occurred, my brother had actually gone to stay with my aunt and her children uh, for a break because he'd been with my grandparents for a little while and it was going to be too much for them, my mother felt, to have both my brother and me there at the same time. So my brother was staying at my aunt's house. This night, you know, as usual, I felt really uneasy in bed and the lights were turned out and I I dreaded going to sleep because I knew I knew that something was going to happen the minute that the house got quiet and I it just had this feeling it had this feeling of heaviness and of something going on behind the scenes just just this feeling and and typically when something is occurring um, in a way that I can't see what's happening or it doesn't register with me it is um I, I get this feeling of almost like a weight on my back, but no pressure. It's just, it's almost like someone invading my personal space behind me. Like if someone were to come up behind you and just stand and stare at the back of your head for an extended period of time, just the fact that there is someone behind you begins to register and it just makes you feel uneasy. Even though you're not seeing them, you're feeling this presence behind you. So this, you know, I just had that feeling all the time when I was in the home. And looking back on it, I wonder if it wasn't because my great-grandmother, being Scottish, recognized somebody that had the family gifts as well and maybe was just keeping her eye on me so to speak um i wonder if it wasn't that there was there was some kind of recognition going on and i was being watched to see how things would play out or if i would notice things maybe so this night the lights went out in the house and it was very, very quiet as usual. And it took me some time to fall asleep because I felt like I was hearing footfalls, like people walking and, and floorboards creaking and things like that. And I kept trying to convince myself that these things were not happening or that it was my grandmother walking around or, you know, maybe my grandfather getting up and walking around or you know an older sister had come home even though I hadn't heard anyone come in to the house you know I, I was trying to reason away these footfalls that I kept hearing eventually after some time I did manage to fall asleep and it felt to me like I was only asleep for a very short time when I was awakened immediately 
from sleep. And immediately I was aware that there were other people in the room. They were voices I didn't recognize. And I opened my eyes real quick, very quickly, and looked at the foot of my bed where I heard the voices coming from. And I saw five figures standing at the end of the bed. And I remember being surprised and thinking to myself, why would grandmother have people in my room? She knows I'm trying to sleep. And then at the same time that I had that thought, or I should say directly on the heels of that thought, I had another thought. Grandmother wouldn't do that. So then I began trying to reason out who these people were. And they began to talk more, you know. I What woke me up was them having a conversation. I could hear people talking, but it wasn't registering what they were saying. And then after I was trying to reason this away and realized, okay, this, I can't reason this away. There's something going on here. I began to try to listen to what it was they were saying. And laying there listening, it was muffled and I couldn't really hear what they were saying in complete sentences but just parts of sentences like we have to make sure and she's and you know just like incomplete sentences and she's this and she's that and the feeling that I was getting was that I was being discussed and So, because I was the one being discussed, I popped my head up and opened my eyes to look at them like, oh wait, why am I being talked about? And immediately, quiet. Immediate quiet. And they froze. So no movement, no speaking, they just froze almost as if if we if we don't move and we don't talk she'll go back to sleep and i didn't go back to sleep and i l- laid back down and closed my eyes and after some time i peeked out And I noticed that one by one, they began to leave. So one would leave the foot of my bed and go through what I would, when I woke up the next day. So that night, it would go, I thought there must be a door there because they would leave the foot of the bed and go toward this one area in the room and then they'd be gone. So for a child that is between the ages of three and four, my logic was like, oh, there's a door there. And I just didn't know there was one there. So one person would go. A couple seconds later, the next person would go. A couple of seconds later, the next person would go. And so on and so forth until all five people were no longer in the room with me. And it was just quiet. And you could hear, at that point in time, I began to hear the crickets outside and the tree frogs calling and and things like that. The normal nighttime sounds that you would hear. Um, So the next morning, when I woke up, I looked over at that part of the room expecting to see a door there and the only thing there was a wall. 
And so again, I get, I began to feel very, very confused about this. What was going on? You know, am I losing my mind? Because as a small child, I, I recognized that the things that I was experiencing defied everything that I had been taught could occur in life. <laughs> you know, the, the things that you would teach a four-year-old or a three-and-a-half-year-old right around in there, they were being defied. Because I know what I saw. And as I grew older, I began to recognize within myself that I had always been a very logical person. Even from the time that I was very young, I was incredibly logical. So that's why I was always trying to make sense of these things that were occurring to me that defied logic. And... I recognized that there was no door there where I saw everyone walk to and leave. And that the door was actually on the opposite side of the room. So when I could not figure out a logical explanation for myself, I decided I would ask my grandmother about it. Because my grandmother, in my mind, knew everything. She... Still to this day, I think she's amazing. I adore her. She's my idol. She's passed away for quite some time now, but I feel like she was one of the most beautiful people I've known in my whole entire life. And I know that she watches over me, which, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that in a later podcast, but... You know, even at that point in time as a very young child, I just absolutely adored her. I trusted her completely and I knew that she would know what was going on and be able to tell me and help me make sense of it. So I went downstairs and, you know, sat down for breakfast and looked at my grandmother and I said, Grandmother, there were people in my room last night. And she kind of froze. And then she said, very cautiously, people in your room. And I said, yes, there was a bunch of people in my room last night. They woke me up talking. They were standing at the end of the bed. And, you know, at that point in time, I think probably because she did not want to scare me because of my age, she downplayed it and said, oh, maybe that was your sister. Talking about one of my older sisters that would come and go from there um, periodically. And... I knew it wasn't my sister. My sister wasn't one of them because I hadn't heard her come in the house. And also because none of the voices were hers. So I knew it couldn't be her. And I tried to say that to my grandmother and she just, you know, she wasn't having any of it. She was just, no, you're mistaken. It had to be that. So, of course, I was confused, you know, because I wasn't being supported and it was making me feel even more like, okay, I'm losing my mind. And I know that was not her intention whatsoever. She was trying to protect me. And I know that's all my grandmother ever wanted because she loved me very much. Um, So then I asked her, what, where did you do something with the door on that side of the room? And she said, honey, there's no door on that side of the room. And I insisted, yes, yes, there was. Yes, 
last night there was a door on that side of the room. This morning, the door is gone. There's only the one on the other side of the room. And I kept insisting to her that there was a door on that side of the room to the point that she got angry because she was telling me that there was no door on that side of the room. There was only the one on the other side. So we both were becoming very frustrated with each other because I, I know I had seen that door. And so I dropped it because I adore my grandmother and I did not want to upset her or make her angry with me, which I felt at that point in time, you know, as a young child, I felt like she was getting angry with me. But actually, looking back as an adult, I recognize it was more frustrated and, and she was she was confused and frustrated feeling the same exact way that I was at that point in time. So that was one thing that happened at my grandparents' house. Um, Now, during that same time period, I had come in from outside. And bear in mind, my my grandparents owned a lot of property. So as little kids, we were able to just run around and play and do whatever we wanted out in the woods and, you know, out in the fields and whatever it was we wanted to do. Pretty much had free reign and we could just show up at the house when we wanted to and grandmother would fix us something to eat and we could go on back out and play. You know, it was a different world back then. So um, I had been out, outside playing. And I had come into the house and I was expecting my grandmother to be there and I heard voices on the stairs and I ran through the kitchen in through the sitting room into the living room and around the corner to the stairs that went up to the second floor and expected to see people there on the landing talking. And I still heard their voices there, a man and a woman having a discussion. Uh, It seemed like a very, almost very tense discussion. And I called out to them, grandmother, granddaddy, and immediately the voices stopped. And I looked at the landing where I had heard the voices coming from and no one was there. But I knew that I had looked up there too quickly for them to run and hide. Because at the same time I was calling out to them, I was looking up at the landing. And by the time that my eyes had focused on it, there was no one there. And the voices had ceased. And there were no footsteps exiting. This was a very old home, so there would have been creaking of floorboards up and down the stairs. Anytime anyone went up and down those stairs, the boards would creak because it, it was a very old home. It, it was, you know, almost 100 years old at that point. So, again... I was just incredibly confused because this was just another occurrence that defied logic for me. Um, So I spent time going around looking for grandmother and granddaddy. And as soon as the, the conversation on the stairs stopped and no one responded to me, I felt incredibly uneasy that the feeling of of the weight on my back was there again and I left that area went into the living room calling out no one was there kind of ran through the sitting room because it was dark there it was pretty much used for storage at that point in time because my grandfather had collected so many things 
that that room, the beauty of that room was hidden now by objects that were being stored in there. So ran through there into the kitchen calling and nobody was there. So I left the inside of the house and I went out on the porch. This had a screened in porch. Our, our family home had a screened in porch on three sides. So looking, calling, looking, calling, no one. Um, there were barns and several cabins on the property as well that my grandfather had begun to use for storage. So I, um, you know, the big barn with all the stuff in it was a little scary, but I was determined to find out who it was that I had heard talking. So I, you know, called out in the barn, grandmother, no response, just silence, really silent. Um, and I knew that she wouldn't be in the cabins because they were full, just chock full of stuff. You could see everything stacked up in the windows and some of them were missing doors and it was just storage. And so I knew she wouldn't be in there. And then I realized the truck was gone. My grandmother was a tiny lady at that point in time, probably about the size that I am now. I am a little bit less than five foot four. And she drove this big, old, orange and white Ford pickup truck. And that was not parked in the driveway. So I knew that she wasn't there. And so I just stayed outside. I couldn't couldn't find my way back in the, the house because I was just too nervous to be in there alone with whoever it was that was in there with me. So I just stayed outside and eventually my grandmother came home and I told her, Grandmother, somebody was in the house. Granddaddy was talking to a woman in the house. And my grandmother said, well, honey, you're, she said, your grandfather isn't here right now. I'm the only one that's at home. And I just ran down to the campground to make sure that the campers had all paid their fees. So let me go inside. She said, you stay out here and I'll go inside and make sure there's no one in the house. And so she went in the house and she checked everything out and she came back out and got me and she said, sweetheart, I don't know who you heard, but there's no one in the house. Come on in. So we entered the house. And again, <laughs> this just added to my feeling of being very uncomfortable. I think part of why I felt so uncomfortable in the house is because I was experiencing so many things there and I kept talking to my grandmother about them and I knew even as a child if I keep telling grandmother that these things are happening to me and she keeps looking for people and there's nobody there. And she's just going to think I am completely nuts. And again, I idolize, to this day, I still idolize my grandmother. So I didn't want my idol to think I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, you know. So I... <laughs> I was just torn. I really, I really wanted someone to validate what I was experiencing. But on the other hand, I didn't want to expose myself too much because I didn't want the person that I loved most in the world to think that I was nuts. So, you know, it, it was just 
just full of conflicts for me. I, my life has been very full of conflicting emotions surrounding my gifts. I do, I do feel that they're gifts, challenges sometimes as well. Um, so let me, let me go on to the next incident that happened at my grandparents' house. So, um, one morning I was late waking up. Who knows what happened the night before? I, I don't remember any visits, but even today, if I wake up and I feel that I've had a sleepless night, I just assume it's because someone has been to visit and has been talking to me while I've been trying to sleep because that has happened so many times that, you know, it, it really does d disturb your sleep pattern. <laughs> as you can imagine. And then when I wake up, I don't remember anything that was talked about because they're they're venting to me and I'm in a sleep state which, you know, I feel like it's easier for them to approach me when I'm asleep because I do put up certain boundaries when I'm awake. Um only because I I feel like so much has happened to me already that if I were to just completely take all my boundaries so that everyone could approach me, it would feel very overwhelming to me. And I'm not sure that I could handle that. So um, that's pretty much the same reason that I don't seek things out. Like, um, you know, going to places that have a reputation of being haunted and things like that. That's not what I do and I don't do it specifically because every what has occurred to me um, th throughout my whole life has been so frequent that I just I don't know if opening the door completely and accepting everyone that comes through it is just a really good idea for me uh, kudos to the people that can handle that because there are people out there that can handle it and deal with it very well, but I'm not so sure that I could be one of those people. I really don't know, but I'm a little too nervous to try. So anyway, I digress. Back to <laughs> my, st my relaying of this incident that occurred. So I, for whatever reason, I was late waking up that morning. Came down the stairs, everyone else was already up and gone. Um, it was it was before lunch, before lunchtime. The, I remember looking outside and recognizing immediately that it was in the morning but it wasn't early morning. It, the sun didn't have the look of early morning. Um, it had the look more of being before lunchtime, but still, you know, in the morning. So I didn't hear anyone in the house, but in spite of that, I, I went looking for my grandmother because, of course, by now you know she's my favorite person. So I went looking for her, and I couldn't find her in the house. She wasn't in the kitchen. She wasn't in the living room. Um, after the incident on the stairs, I was a little nervous about going upstairs by myself. And especially considering, you know, everything that had happened upstairs. Um, even though, I mean, even though to this point we're talking about two incidents, but that's a lot for a small child to handle. So I was still nervous about going upstairs by myself. So that was the one place I was hesitant, very hesitant to go and look for my grandmother. So I didn't go up there. 
um, but she wasn't anywhere downstairs. And then I looked out the window and my grandmother had behind the house a strawberry patch. And I knew that she would be out there periodically tending to her strawberry plants. So I looked out the window and I saw someone in the strawberry patch. I just assumed it was my grandmother. I thought she was dressed awfully strangely. I had never seen my grandmother wear this beautiful pink dress with puffy sleeves and it was a long dress. It was tight at the waist and long down to the ground and had a petticoat underneath it and she was wearing this pink wide brimmed hat as well that matched the dress and I could see beautiful um, beautiful golden hair under the hat and at, at that point in time you know I didn't really think about the hair and the clothing I just saw someone in the strawberry patch and I was like oh there's where grandmother is you know me and my little obsessed self looking for my grandmother <laughs> and I remember being so excited that I found her because I just love her to pieces so I ran out the door grandmother you know so I mean one of the reasons I was excited was that it was just gonna be me and grandmother you know we didn't get we didn't get those opportunities very often and at the moment that I yelled grandmother the person in the strawberry patch stood up and started to turn and you know I was looking down at my little feet going down the stairs so I wouldn't eat it as I was running down the stairs and by the time I got down the three steps and looked up there was no one in the strawberry patch there was no one coming toward me there was no one and this person, if it, if it was a living human being at that, at that time, there was nowhere that they could go because the yard was cleared around the strawberry patch for quite some distance. So to the left of the strawberry patch, there was a hill that went up to the road. And I thought, oh, maybe it was, a, you know, maybe it was just somebody that came down to steal my grandmother's strawberries. You know, I was going to tell them off because nobody touches my grandmother's things, my little obsessed self. So I look up there to the road and there's no car. And I'm like, okay, confusion. <laughs> so... Then I thought, somebody's playing a trick on me. Why would grandmother trick me like that? Why would she wear those clothes in her strawberry patch? I've never seen her wear those clothes. That was fancy clothes. And she was in the strawberry patch. And then I started thinking about it and realized whoever was in the strawberry patch had beautiful golden blonde hair in curls under the wide brimmed hat and I couldn't think of anybody in the family that looked like that and again you know before I became before I began to understand all of these things that were happening to me were spirits um, I was so confused because taken out of context that way it just seems like someone is really trying to mess with you you know 
who has it in for you so bad that they're going to mess with you all the time like that, you know? And, and I knew, I knew my grandmother would never do those things because she, she let me know how much she loved me. She made me feel loved, which is one of the reasons I was so, why I adored her so. Um, so I knew it wasn't her. So immediately, because of what happened with the conversation on the stairs, I ran to see if her truck was in the driveway. And sure enough, her truck was not in the driveway. And, you know, you, I know I mentioned the campground, my grandmother going to the campground um, a, a few minutes earlier. I should give you a little more information on that. My grandparents owned a campground. It was on the property. It was on their property. So, and like I say, it was a different time. And um, my grandparents were like the, um, <clears throat> they were the landowners of, of the neighborhood. They were well-respected. They were pillars of the community. So for my grandmother to leave a young child in the house, you know, while they were sleeping was not, it was no big deal in that community that time, you know, in the United States, it really was not a big deal because they didn't, things didn't happen in the United States like they happen today. You know, you didn't hear of all the things that happened to children back then like you do now. So she thought nothing of running to the campground to make sure the campers were okay and then coming back to the house and making me breakfast and just letting me sleep instead of waking me up and dragging my little cranky pants down to the campground with her. So, um, you know, when she got back to the house that time I just sat on the porch swing we had a big swing on the porch and I just sat out there I waited and waited and waited hoping that I wasn't gonna be left alone there for too long so pretty soon she showed up of course and uh, I said to her grandmother somebody was in your strawberry patch and she was like, somebody was in my strawberry patch. And I said, yes, someone was in your strawberry patch. And she said, oh, really? What did they look like? And I think that maybe she was expecting, you know, I would describe a neighbor or a friend or a family member, somebody that, you know, somebody that from town maybe that, because my grandmother was very generous and it's entirely possible she could have told someone come out to the strawberry patch and get yourself some strawberries and you know you can make jam strawberry jam with them because that's something my grandmother would do but then when I began to describe the person to my grandmother she got this twinkle in her eye and she leaned down to me and she said, Oh, you saw my friend. Very confidentially. And I said, Your friend? And she said, Oh, yes. She helps me in the strawberry patch every once in a while. And even as a child, I picked up on the undertones of what she was trying to say without actually coming out and saying it. <laughs> because, you know, no person in the mid-1970s would go to the strawberry patch in a wide brim pink hat with a matching pink gown <laughs> with a petticoat underneath to pick strawberries. 
and I knew that there had been no vehicle or anything like that up on the road so where had this person gone I knew that person would not have come through the woods dressed that way either so and by the way that my grandmother reacted I knew that she had this was someone that she had seen before as well this was possibly a family member that had passed on before that she had seen as well so now my final incident that occurred at my grandparents house that I can remember anyway um, was one afternoon I I had been put down for a nap I was feeling really emotional as you can imagine I was exhausted by everything that had been happening and and there was a lot of um, stressful things going on in in our lives at that time and you know so I just I was I'm sure a total cranky pants that day and grandmother had got agitated with me and made me go upstairs and lay down for a nap so I went upstairs sadly and laid down for a nap and cried myself to sleep and when I woke up I woke to the sound of beautiful beautiful piano music playing now my grandparents had in their living room an antique piano that had come with the family from Scotland and it had been my great aunt's piano and she had passed away when she was young nobody in the family could r remember what she had passed away from but she they did remember that she had been 18 or 19 when she passed and she had been sick for a, a little bit of time and she was the family just doted on her they just absolutely loved her she was the youngest of the family and she was beautiful and talented and vivacious and I I actually am named after her she was just adored by everyone in the family and this piano had belonged to her and we had my brother and I had been told that we couldn't touch it that we were not allowed to touch this piano so of course you know I was deathly afraid of my grandfather so there was no way that I was gonna touch this piano and this was to a three or four year old little girl this was like concert piano music it was that beautiful so I woke up and I laid there listening for just a couple minutes and being impressed with this person that was playing the piano and I knew in the house was my grandfather my grandmother my brother and myself I was napping my grandfather occasionally allowed my brother to plink around on the piano my grandmother never played the piano because she she just didn't have time she was really busy so I thought it must either be my brother or my grandfather so I jumped up and I ran downstairs and as soon as I got to the landing that was halfway down the stairs the piano music stopped and I'm still running I'm I'm you know running my little heart out down there because <laughs> I want to listen up close and personal to this beautiful piano music so the stairs opened out in the foyer and in the foyer the living room 
was on one side. So it, so we, if you're coming down the stairs, you enter the foyer and the living room is, you go through an opening to your left and there was the living room. And the piano was just on that wall. So you go right around the corner and bam, there's the piano. A beautiful, beautiful upright carved wood um, just absolutely gorgeous piano so I'm running 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 run around the corner and no one there so I thought okay my brother's tricking me and I was you know I thought that must have been my brother that he had gotten that good almost like I tell you I was very logical but I know I recognize that some of the some of my reasoning that I am telling you right now does not sound very logical, does it? But you have to understand when a young child like that is confronted with illogical situations, they're grasping for any kind of logic that their little brain can come up with. So in my mind, I had slept so long that my brother had become a piano genius. So <laughs> I was gonna, I was just gonna tell him how much I loved his piano playing. So when I didn't see him at the piano, I was like, okay, he must, he must have gone into the kitchen because he wasn't in the living room either. The rooms on the other side of the hall had been filled with stuff by my grandfather. So you kind of you kind of get the idea as to what was happening with the house. So when I didn't see him in the living room, I knew there was only one other place he could be, and that's in the kitchen. So I run in the kitchen, and sure enough, he's in there with my grandmother. And I ran up to him, and I hugged him. And I said, that was so beautiful. And he and my grandmother just looked at me like, what is she talking about now? And he was like, what are you talking about? And I said, your piano playing, that was so beautiful. It's amazing. I didn't know you were that good. And he said, I wasn't playing the piano. I've been in the kitchen this whole time with grandmother. And of course I got mad because I felt like he was trying to torment me <laughs> you know <laughs> so I I got mad and frustrated and I looked at grandmother and she was backing him up so then of course I felt like I'd I'd been ganged up on it why was everybody being so mean to me so I may have been a little sensitive at the time as well <laughs> but so then I, I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out who had been playing the piano. And the odd thing is that my grandmother and my brother hadn't heard the piano music. Only I had heard it. And to this day, I'm still confused by that. Because most likely because I don't know all the ins and outs of this you know of this gift that I have there's probably an expert out there that could tell me a certain amount of these things that occur I you know once so many of them occurred to me I, I just started to take things on faith so to speak because you just get used to it after a while if you're not terrified by it you're gonna get used to it so, you know, I still remember, though, to this day, my little heart being broken because my brother and my grandmother were playing a trick on me and wouldn't admit it. <laughs> and I felt so betrayed that my grandmother was pranking me. <laughs> As I got older, I understood that that's not what was happening at all that it was another one of my experiences. And I do feel like it was my great aunt that was there playing the piano. 
and maybe it was her gift to me that I was the only one that got to hear it. I am named after her, after all. So you never know. But those were the experiences that I can remember that occurred at my grandparents' home. There probably was more. I don't, I really don't. These are the ones that I remember. So, you know, if, you're, if your child comes to you and they're telling you that something like that happened to them, maybe there's a possibility that it did. And there's a way that you can be supportive of them without actually feeding into it just in case, you know, they are, um, just in case they are pulling, <laughs> pulling your chain, because that happens too, you know, little children will, will, will pull your chain sometimes too, but what if they're not, you know, do you want them to feel lonely and isolated when they're experiencing these things? There's so much of this world that we don't understand. And we try to put it in a box. You know, it wasn't that long ago that the world was flat. And to some people it still is. You know, we don't know everything. We are not the experts. I don't think we're the experts on anything. At this point, there is so much more to life and this world than you can see with the eye. So, you know, maybe it's worth just giving them the time of day and letting them tell you what happened, asking them questions about it so that they can feel validated, and then just giving them a hug and a kiss and saying, and thank you for sharing that with me. I'm glad you told me. So that they don't have to feel isolated about it. I mean, and it doesn't have to be your child either. It, it could be anyone. It could be your spouse. You know, people have spiritual awakenings at any age. It can occur at any age. It doesn't just have to occur when you're a child. So keep that in mind. So... Thank you for going with me down memory lane and, you know, listening to the things that have happened to me. And this is, this is just scratching the surface of the things that I've experienced. So you'll hear about more things in the upcoming podcasts and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it gives you some insight and, you know, opens your mind to parts of the universe and this world that maybe you've been, maybe you feel like they're there, but you're going to deny it for as long as you can because it makes you feel uncomfortable. I totally get that. Been there, done that. I don't deny it any longer. Those days are long past. I accept it. And, you know, maybe if you feel nervous about accepting it, you listen to this and, and you hear that someone else has had similar experiences and they've come to accept it and it's okay. Maybe at some point you'll feel like You'll be okay if you accept it as well. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Tune in for my next podcast. I'll be telling you about some more experiences I've had. Thank you so much.